Hi there, Dr. Gary here on the road. We are dental practice brokers nationwide. And I was a dentist for 25 years, and now we're doing for 14 years the dental practice brokerage. Today's topic is, can the buyer of a dental office change the price after the letter of intent? We'll talk about that. Now, um, as you know, we have 22, we're in 22 states, we have uh, 10 employees, and we're working 363 days a year, all right? You can reach us from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. The website is dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebrokers.com. Everything you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal advice. Now, if you are thinking about uh, selling to a big DSO, call us. We work with them. We're independent. But they pay our commission. And we will pay your commission. If it's over a million dollars or over any practice, we will reimburse your legal fees based on some small criteria. Uh, and just call us. So we can talk to you about it. Uh, but we're really immersed and we've done that many times. Now, uh, today's topic, can you change that? After you agreed upon a letter of intent, can you change the dollar value you've agreed to? Letter of intent is non-binding, okay? It's a handshake if you want to call it. You can pull out anytime. Buyer pulls out, seller pulls out. That's it. You can pull out. However, it is... Uh, <laughs> It is not a good idea to try to change that price. The seller's going to be pissed. They're going to be demoralized. Of course, the seller can change the price. The buyer can change the price. I don't suggest it at all. I would never do it. Even if it's, uh, you know, you're like crazy. You're talking about 30, 40, 50,000, maybe on a million dollar deal. You should never do it. Because you're going to lose the trust of the seller. The seller is going to lose the trust if you, the buyer, are trying to change the price. Generally, it's not the seller that will change the price. It's the buyer. As the buyer comes up or gets nervous or who knows what happens, think they're paying too much, or some accountant tells them they're overpaying, ridiculous. Um, you shouldn't do that because the money you're trying to save in a reduction, first of all, they may not go for it until you hit the road. And you got to go through the whole process again because now you've found the practice. It's probably in the location you want. It's the type of practice you want. Hey, you're going to be making money. If you overpay a little bit more, yeah, but in a lifetime, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000. What does it matter? You're going to make the money back. But now you got to start all over again. You have, you've lost your investment for the future. You're going to go back to working for somebody else. You have no equity, no guarantee. No guarantee means you work with somebody else, you get hurt on a Friday, you're not going to work on Monday. And you won't have probably have enough disability to cover it. You're out. You own your own practice, call a couple buddies up, they'll come into work. When you agree to a letter of intent, stick with it. No matter what, unless you found something extraordinary like fraud or there's something else you didn't know about, a huge thing. But not ask, not the selling price. You never do that. You'll lose all trust from the seller immediately. And as in most cases, the seller will tell you, hey, take a walk. There's plenty of buyers out there. And you as the buyer will lose multiple times over. Never do that. Even if you think you're being over, you're, pay, you're overpaying, well... You know, you agreed to it. You know, you don't have to go through it. You can find another practice, go through the whole process again, waste your time again. And if you found a practice that meets all your criteria and it's off in value 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000, you know, on a deal that's over 700,000, so what? You're going to make it up. That price is the price that you were comfortable with and the seller was comfortable with. So I'm telling you, don't do it. And I have a situation right now. I've uh, told the seller that what they want a reduction in the selling price. The seller said, "Really? Well, you can tell them hit the road because I'm not reducing my selling price. 
In fact, I'm doing better this year than I was last year. So the next person who's going to get this is going to get a real bonus. Tell them to take a hike. And that's what's happening. And the buyer, they'll lose many times over. See, the winner in a dental practice sale is the buyer because they're buying a business growing equity, business growing thing. A seller only gets his money and that's it. Buyer can keep growing. Big mistake, don't do it. I'll see you team, gotta run. Going to visit a new practice now on the road in Jersey. And it is summertime. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Bye now.